Have you ever been on an aircraft that's on its approach to land and all of a sudden you hear the engine spool up and the aircraft goes around? This video will explain many of the reasons why pilots decide to go around and should hopefully arm you with the information the next time when you're on an aircraft and you see that the pilots are taking a second attempt at the landing, you'll understand that the reason why this happened is actually for your safety and it's not something you need to be worrying about. Firstly, I would just like to thank everybody that commented in the previous videos and suggested that I look into this topic and make this video. I always read the comments, so if you have any suggestions, please just put it in the comments below and I'll see what I can do in the future. So as we've described already, a go around is simply the pilot's decision to not continue with the approach and landing. The main purpose being because the pilots deem the approach or landing to be unsafe. And there are many different reasons of why they come to this conclusion. One of the main reasons is something called a stabilized approach. Now this means that the pilots will have a set criteria that they need to have the aircraft in by a certain height above the ground. So the criteria will differ very slightly depending on the aircraft type and the airline that's operating the aircraft. But generally speaking, the aircraft will need to be stabilized by a thousand feet above the airport elevation when the aircraft's in IMC, and IMC stands for Instrument Meteorological Conditions, and that basically means that the, the weather's not fit to fly visually, so the pilots will be flying on instruments. And if that's the case, they need to be stabilized by a thousand feet. If they're flying visually, which will be in VMC, which stands for Visual Meteorological Conditions, then it will genuinely be 500 feet above the airport elevation. So this means that if the pilots aren't satisfied that the aircraft is stabilized by these heights, then they must go around. So the criteria they need to fulfill to be stabilized is that the aircraft is on a correct flight path. Only small changes in heading and pitch are necessary to maintain that flight path. The airspeed is no more than VREF plus 20 knots. VREF is your threshold speed, so it's the speed you want your aircraft to be as it crosses the threshold. And that will be determined by the aircraft weight, the weather conditions of the day, and the configuration of the aircraft. The aircraft will also need to be in its correct landing configuration and not have a sink rate more than a thousand feet per minute. That is, of course, unless the approach requires a sink rate higher than a thousand feet per minute. All the briefings and checklists have been conducted. And finally, that the power setting is appropriate for the aircraft configuration and not below the minimum power setting. If these criteria are not filled by the specified heights, then the aircraft will go around. And the reason for that is the pilots don't have enough time to either wash off some of the speed they've got or get the aircraft configured correctly before the landing. So all that will happen is the pilots will set so they go around thrust they will configure the aircraft for takeoff again, so they'll get the gear up uh, and they'll set the flaps into an appropriate place. And then they'll just speak to air traffic and get fed in for another approach. Another big reason why pilots may decide to go around will be if they're flying an instrument approach and the weather is particularly bad, there is a minimum height set depending on the instrument approach you're using. And if the pilots get to that point and they're still not visual with the airfield, they will then need to go around. In those circumstances, you may find that the aircraft diverts to another airfield with more suitable weather, or they simply fly up and enter a hold if the weather is deemed to clear within a suitable amount of time. It's also worth noting that if the aircraft passes below the stabilized height and it was once stabilized but then becomes unstabilized, again, a go around must be initiated. So they're the two main reasons under normal conditions on why an aircraft may go around but there's so many other circumstances where pilots may deem it is essential to go around. So for example, if another aircraft is on the runway, then the pilots will obviously decide to abort that approach and landing, and then fly around and try again once the aircraft has cleared the runway. Now the same could be said for vehicles on the runway, people on the runway, an excessive amount of birds on the runway. If the pilots deem that it's unsafe to continue, they can go around at any time. There's a good example here of a bird strike on an approach. Now the pilots decide to continue with the approach, but I believe this is because the pilot in the left-hand seat is flying. But if the pilot in the right-hand seat was flying at this point, rather than handing over controls, it would probably be safer to go around, set up for the left-hand pilot, check that everything's working correctly, and then land as normal. But the absolute main point 
is if the pilots feel uncomfortable or feel like something is unsafe, they will initiate a go-around to ensure the safety of the aircraft and everybody on board. And that's probably the main takeaway from this video, is if you're on an aircraft and the pilots decide to initiate a go-around, it's only for your safety, which means it was a safer thing to do than continue on the approach. And that's all I really have for you on this one, just a short video today. But I would like to thank you for all the comments and likes that I've received so far. Thank you to everyone that subscribed and please do consider liking and subscribing because it will really help me to continue to make these videos and hopefully continue with this channel. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.